give it a couple minutes here for a few more folks to join. Give it another uh, minute or so, and then we can get started. We can get started. Um, okay, so just uh, as a reminder, uh, this is uh, uh, this meeting is um, falls under the CNCF, and so uh, you know your participation uh, should abide by the CNCF's uh, code of conduct. Um, this meeting is also recorded and will be uploaded to YouTube a little bit uh, after this. Um, a couple of things before I hand it over to Hector, who has a, a demo or presentation for us today. Uh, so a couple of things um, quickly. So just as a reminder, here is the uh, the notes. Um, this will probably be the last meeting at this time. Um, we'll probably be looking to sort of reschedule it based on a, uh, a doodle poll here. Um, if anybody isn't aware of the doodle poll, I'll leave it open just probably till the end of, you know, till this afternoon or till the end of today. Um, so if there's, we're looking to sort of reschedule because a lot of people can't make this time anymore. Um, uh, so yeah, if, if you know, uh, get in the stuff now, uh, I know anybody who would like to participate, you know, send that out to them. Um, but we do plan to close it uh, pretty soon. Figure by today. Um, a couple of quick updates. Uh, so 
uh, our technical writer. Um, it did provide a lot of feedback on uh, the uh, the uh, supply chain white paper, or sorry, the uh, reference architecture paper, I should say, the secure software factory um, reference architecture paper. And so there are definitely, um, uh, so uh, anybody who, you know, wants to um, part of the group, make sure you kind of go through, start to address some of the comments. Um, I addressed a, a couple of dozen of uh, Celeste's, the, the technical writer, um, their comments. Uh, and so um, I'm, uh, what was I gonna say? Oh, so so went through a bunch of those. There's still a, a bunch more that still need to kind of get addressed. Um, some of them are just quick, like, you know, oh, this seems like a grammatical error or this seems a little unclear. You know, I suggest, you know, this word as opposed to that word, simple sort of stuff. Some of it's quite a bit um, larger uh, sorts of, things like does this this term doesn't make sense the way you're using it and you use it kind of throughout the paper um you know maybe we should look at uh, a different way to word something a different way to phrase something uh there's a couple of areas that there's some worry that we're getting a little too jargon heavy um and and are there things we can do to either uh make sure that we are very clear about the definitions of of the jargon and and whatnot or or um you know, whatever. So uh, yeah, so please take a look at the document and let me go and I'll also put that in there as well. Um, go through any comments, you know, put in stuff there. We wanna kind of get this done uh, so, uh, as soon as possible so that we can kind of get this thing out to the broader community. Um, I will be also drafting up a, a uh, I guess a release, um, for uh for actual um for us to actually uh release to to uh, sorry drafting up um i guess a, a a release announcement so that the community knows about these things um anyway uh so so that's that uh reminder you know for anybody who's joining um and hasn't uh put in the stuff for the doodle poll uh, make sure that you put your, you know, what uh, we, we are going to be changing the time of the meeting because this time doesn't work for um, a lot of folks anymore. So we're going to be changing the time um, there. Uh, that's about it as far as, as updates. And I'll hand it over to Hector who has, uh, who wants to show some stuff off. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, okay. So um, I'm going to say a presentation and I have a demo. I'm going to try to be as quick as possible. Um, one second. Uh, let me know. Can you see the slides, the first slide? Um, okay, so um, uh, the idea is, is to show a demo about the uh, SBOM uh, content uh, mission controller on Kubernetes. Um, so I have uh, called a prototype, also used some, some of the services that have been built in, in uh, VMware. Um, so about me, uh, I'm tech lead at VMware. I'm working on se um, supply chain security, uh, focusing on, on three areas, signing, scanning, and, and uh, artifact storage. Um, I have been previously working at Mesosphere, Red Hat, and Janswarm, uh, several years working on, uh, on, on Kubernetes 5 or 6. And yeah, happy open source contributor, either security tools or any other uh, space, mainly Kubernetes. Um, so what I wanted to talk is, is how we kill, um, how, how this kind of uh, SBOM content validation can be achieved. Um, I hear from, from the community there are uh, several uh, problems and, and challenges. So uh, I wanted to kind of uh, uh, go into uh, experimental mode and try to find uh, options in order to, to get uh, to offer uh, a good experience and also in this case performance and, and, all, uh, and uh, optimize uh, what we can do with this bombs uh, when, when uh, developing uh, Kubernetes and mission controller. Uh, I guess uh, for the audience on, on this, on this uh, working group, uh, there is no need to explain what is an SBOM file or why we need them. I, I'm pretty sure everyone 
knows that. Um, so the idea is this basically um, to try to enforce the, these minimal requirements of ice bomb to have and, and those can, can be uh, extracted from, from what the NTA um, um, published, right? Like uh, supplier, authors, uh, components, dependencies, and, and uh, all, all these uh, lists. Um, where, where you can apply all these as bond emission controllers or content verification, uh, we have identified two places. One in the supply chain, wherever you really want to define a new step on your supply chain where things will be uh, banned or these, these kind of emission controllers will wall like a gate uh, stopper. Um, so in that sense, you could, you could enforce uh, certain policies or certain rules to, to satisfy uh, some compliance. In the post deployment, whenever you have a, your running cluster with a, with your running container images, then you probably want to really be aware of, of vulnerabilities. You want to detect uh, which kind of version and package you are running, since when, um, and and I don't know which licenses. Whether I should stop certain certain uh, pods because they are using a license that has changed. Uh, an example could be the change of license that Grafana happened uh, to do. And, and yeah, other, other types of uh, auditing purposes that you can do with, a, with an SBOM file. Um, yeah, so uh, I, I, I share this example of this uh, McDonald's burger that survived 20 years, right? That with this SBOM, we know that this is changing constantly, right? And, and uh, we are trying to validate uh, using the SBOM uh, data. We are trying to get vulnerabilities. We are trying to, to identify deprecated libraries and maintain repositories and, and, and probably blacklist suppliers, right? Um, then uh, one of the assumptions that I have been following uh, on, on how the community works uh, and also internally at VMware, we have like, we are building uh, all these kind of container images. We are signing them and we are uh, generating as well for them. And most of the time we are uh, kind of uh, attaching those uh, on the OCI registry, right? Like we are also atta uh, attaching on, on the registry other kind of artifacts like Helm charts, uh, image bundles, or uh, scan reports or at the station. So that is where, where, where all these, uh, at least what I identify, I'm happy to hear other, other opinions here, is to, to store the small files uh, or I'll link them either using artifact inspect or or following the tab based discovery uh, has has is done with cosine so those is the files that are being attached to the images uh, so you can easily identify and 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 uh, kind of analyze the the content of of the uh, of course the formats are different and they are uh, they are multiple customers or users that prefer SPDX, um, other Cyclone DX, um, and, and as well has versions, formats. So there's a, quali a heterogeneous uh, nature on, on, on what you can find in uh, OCI registry, right? If you are kind of pushing all these from the different teams, and then you are trying to, to uh, play with this data, uh, search and, and offer some capabilities. Um, yeah, as I say, the container registries, you are storing these artifacts, but they don't really need to know exactly what is inside and, and they cannot provide you this information today. Um, so we are, we are looking is to try to explore uh, these uh, search capabilities uh, on what there is uh, being added to the OCI registry by, by the developers um, and um, what we can do out of this information, right? So one one option on when you are uh, thinking about emission controllers and on, on, uh, on Kubernetes, the straightforward approach could be to 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 consume the the registry, uh, extract the bomb from from the linked uh, image, um, validate the authenticity, uh, and and. and this analyze all this uh, SBOM data uh, and, and try to analyze it and, and enforce policies. The problem of, of these kind of uh, straightforward approaches is that, first of all, these bomb files are really big. Uh, they, they can contain multiple uh, uh, SBOM files has on the stack. Uh, and also uh, all this computation of the data licensing, fetching them for OCR registries can, can create performance issues to the OCI registry if it's used for other purposes. And also uh, when you are creating uh, any type of resources. And unfortunately, we are talking about core uh, 
uh, Kubernetes types such as pod. So everything that create a uh, container images will be probably um, uh, verified in order to understand uh, the, 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 which is the S-bone or which are the ingredients of my container images before before deploying. So yeah, that's that's some of the, uh, the same motivations that uh, force us to evolve and and for that, uh, at VMware, we have developed a, a service which is called Metadata Store. Although here, I try to use some more generic terminology, which uh, might be common for uh, everyone, as an artifact store. And the idea is to, um, uh, to, to try to keep uh, synchronize all these kind of information that we are storing in OCI registry, for which we need to have uh, search capabilities to the content try to keep it in sync with uh, with this artifact store. Uh, we have been focused on SBOM, where we see that there is a lot of information and a lot of search capabilities that need to be uh, exposed. So we have kind of created this this um, this service, right? So the idea is, uh, I don't know if you, anyone here have here about Graphias, but we have uh, taken uh, has a has a uh, first stone what was in Graphias and try to evolve it into what uh, we have today. So uh, that's some of the of the things that we have been working around, and and uh, yeah. So that our main intention is, is it was at the beginning was to to uh, find ways to extend the the, the the container registry API in order to offer search capabilities, but uh, there are some some uh, proposals and still they are uh, under review. So we believe that we, we have to kind of provide a, a third party service that could help us to 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 get that information. And based on this data that we store in this uh, artifact uh, service, we we will enforce policies and 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 also try to um, offer some fallback mechanisms. Right, like so. In our case, this proposal of a uh, mission controller for SBOM is always targeting this artifact store, which is indexing the data to give us all, all this information about the, the SBOMs that we have and, and whatever we have to deploy in our clusters. So we don't really need to to uh, have uh, we don't slow the API when creating pods or any kind of, of resource. Right. Um, so that's mainly about that. About future work, um, there are many options. We really want to expand um, this artifact storage service with, with uh, queries that we are identifying from customers that they really want to get answers. Uh, so the idea is to be able, by using this artifact store, um, combined with the admission controller to be able to to, to uh, define policies um, such as when this this vulnerability appear in my infrastructure or or which components are using a specific um, license where I don't really want to be uh, dependencies using on. Um, additional to the to has a new features that might come uh, SPDX supports. We are focused on Cyclone DX supports today, and uh, well designing. GUIs and, and other other ideas, right? Um, regarding the admission controller, um, the demo I'm going to show it doesn't focus on signing or authentic, authenticity of the SMO files, but we really want to reuse um, some of the uh, outputs that the Cosign Six Store Working Group is is trying to define uh, in order to to validate the uh, authenticity of of container by. by basically checking the signatures and policy definition. So we really want to kind of reuse that part. But uh, today we are focusing on, on main simple uh, uh, policies such as can be uh, component uh, dependencies that you are using, uh, name and version, probably license as well. So um, that's, that's what we have. All right, so I'm gonna try to show a demo uh, in... Let me know if you can see my screen. Can you? Uh, terminal, can you see the terminal? Yes, okay, thank you. Uh, awesome. Okay, let me define. Well, so what I wanna show, well, I have a, a harbor um, a registry, right? Um, then the flow um, that I wanna define is like, okay, I build, I build a certain image in this case I will try to use keyclock and uh, let's say I push it to my to my registry and uh, I want to to attach now uh, an SBOM file right so the idea is that um, 
I'm gonna have to copy paste certain uh, scripts so, and then I will explain. So first of all, I, I have my my uh, kick lock image on the on the registry. I have a demo project in Harbor where I have this this kick lock image. And what I'm gonna do is to attach my um, uh, S bomb files, right? So I'm gonna attach it. Hopefully that that will work. Okay, so I have a, a attach, uh, let's say, a blog this one file, and um, if I check it out, uh, uh, okay, maybe it's not yet here. Oh yes, uh, wait a second. Oh no, this is one. Okay, so I have it here. <laughs> Uh, here it is. Okay, I, I have attached this bond, right? The content of this is bond file. I probably switch terminal. Let me know if I need to make it bigger or smaller. Please uh, interrupt me. Don't don't worry. So the content of these uh, is bond files is a cyclone DX generated with uh, with the gripe, right? So let's say that the the developer common flow that we are we are identifying and seeing is you build your image then you you push your image sign in and then generate the SBOM file and with the SBOM file once that you generated for the image that you have built you attach it to to the registry right so in this case as you can see on my harbor registry i have this bomb file which is uh, exactly the cyclone dx output uh, generated from 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 uh, gripe Right, so once I have attached uh, this, uh, I will do the same uh, for another kick log image that uh, I have as well is 116, which doesn't have one of the critical dependencies that uh, has been found with the famous log 4 j uh, error um, that was done again. Uh, oops, sorry. All right, so then I have the other is one file again is the same. Uh, well, is this oops, uh, is the same uh, cyclone DX for the 116, but uh, it, sorry, uh, but it uh, it means uh, well, one of the log J uh, log uh, for J um, versions that was uh, including one of the critical CVs. I, I will show it later. Um, what this what these uh, one of the services that we have well I have a cluster as well I will you expect a, a Kubernetes submission controller um, so I have uh, several pods so I have my my harbor um, um, uh, registry deployed there uh, I have one of the services that I I run in which is um, I call it the metadata store harbor webhook which is at, uh, keeping on sync what I have on harbor um, in my artifact storage, right? So every time I push uh, an artifact and I detect that this is an SBOM file and it's probably the one that I, I want at this point is Cyclone DX. So I, I um, uh, storage on my on my artifact store. So that's that's keeping on sync the data that I am pushing or developers are pushing to the registry with what I have on my artifact store. Um, okay, sorry for switching. Uh, I will. Then what I'm gonna the other part of the of the of the demo uh, is based on this submission controller, which was the main purpose of it. Uh, this submission controller, which is over here, is one verified controller, is uh, let's say a, a draft of uh, policy uh, creation based on SPDS templates on Cyclone DX templates. Um, I have started to uh, identify different potential uh, policy rules that you could create. I mainly focus so far on components, metadata, and, and probably dependencies itself. But um, yeah, there are, there are certain things that probably uh, more certainly I will miss. And it's again, a working promise. The same apply for an SPDX, right? Like here again, I focus on packages dependencies for this first part, but there is a huge bunch of things. Uh, and, and I'm happy to, to work with uh, someone else from the community if they're working on that to, to learn more about uh, what else you think is, is super critical. Um, so yeah, this is an, a policy definition, right? So here I have several, uh, several objects, uh, mainly pods, which I will enforce policy on top of that. And then I have an object, which is a, 
uh, which I call uh, cluster is bomb policy, right? So this object will be, uh, the, let's say, the schema of uh, the whole uh, uh, emission controller to understand which policies we need to enforce and for which kind of uh, images or or uh, projects we really want to enforce certain certain information, right? Um, so the idea is, is to to focus on on different type of of uh, SBOM files. In this case, as I say, we are today supporting only Cyclone DX. That's why uh, I, all the examples are Cyclone DX. But then the idea is to filter out. Um, and in, in, uh, include the SPDX as well. For in these examples, I really, really want to focus on, on just component name and version validation. Um, so what I want to try is uh, I have one example with an older version of Hiclock, which has the the vulnerability. So my my attempt will be to create this pod and uh, get a denial. Right. So I'm gonna. Uh, try to well, I have to show in the cluster, cluster as more policy. So you see as well. Uh, where is this? Uh, oh, no, wait, it's more, let me space it. So the the context is basically the same. I'm so um, in theory because I'm trying to create a pod with my uh, image, which we, uh, belongs to this image pattern. Um, I should be able to to raise the the policy and evaluate whether uh, this one of these images uh, has this version. Uh, this type of policy enforcement is a strict, which which means that uh, whatever I'm defining here is whatever I want to uh, deny, right? Uh, so in this case, if I try to create uh, uh, the demo for the first post click law, oh, sorry. Uh, I should get a deny. All right. Okay. So that's that's one of the examples, right? And and I I, I should I should get a, a a denied request, right? If I if for instance I try to deploy uh, um, let me give an example nginx, right? An nginx uh, that I have with. Uh, for instance, an add user 3118, I should get as well the same error. Uh, let me. Uh, okay. What was the pod? Oh, wait. <laughs> Maybe I, I. This is a demo gods. Um, so, demo, one second. Ah, okay. So, it's using baseline. Uh, sorry about that. Oh, this is library. Okay, so the, because the the rule is defined for for the library uh, for the for the demo, then I, I was able to create the I was able to create the pod. But if I change that, if I did the the policy, or I simply go here and uh, and I change it, yeah, this is changed. The one in the class is not. If I do um, policy. And I try already. Oh, sorry, replace. Mm -hmm. uh, first point, which is NGX. Oh, sorry. Let me validate. Uh, so the pod I'm going to try is registry. Uh, no, this is this is demo. Uh, this is demo, right? So this will complain. Uh, let's see uh, if I try. Yeah. So uh, I have the invalid uh, package at user, right? And then. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, here I have the name and version for uh, the Nginx, right? So this this is a kind of a mission control again. Uh, I, if I uh, check the logs, um, and I can show probably code as well if you want, um, I will check the logs of the webhook and try to explain a bit more. Oh, sorry about the noise. Uh, Nginx, oops, no, Nginx. Um, 
so I get the image. Um, I kind of uh, found the image in the metadata store, as I said. So I'm what I'm doing this admission controller is talking first to the metadata store. So if I'm going to the code, I can be more specific. Uh, and uh, about, so we have a, here uh, a verifier, right? The verify code uh, talks to the to the metadata store, looking for the image. Uh, looking for the image with the s file. If I have it, uh, then I validate the content. And otherwise, I, I kind of talk to the registry and ensure to validate, uh, to download and verify the s right? So that's that's mainly what this admission controller does. Uh, and I think uh, um, within the, the same team, we have uh, developed uh, um, a CLI to talk to the artifact store. And so if we really want to uh, kind of do additional uh, complex uh, queries, such as, I don't know, checking which images in my, in my uh, artifact store has the, the certain, certain uh, library, like a load for j API um, in, this, in this query, I could, I could identify pretty quickly which are the affected uh, software or container images. Uh, I could also... Um, Get the, the 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 content of the resources per per CVE and the same uh, kind of CLI uh, have built. You can uh, fetch which images are are facing a certain CVE and the just by talking to the to the artifact store, right? So in this case, um, you could uh, you could identify and define policies uh, for that. Um, the intention again is. Based on the on the cost uh, and performance degradation that you can cost uh, by by talking to the registry, fetching the information, validating the format, analyzing it, and making policies uh, enforcement, we believe that by relying on a third service, which is the artifact store that I am mentioning here, uh, and which is running on the cluster as well, uh, I can show um, you could. Uh, you could uh, eventually improve uh, the performance. Obviously, and I'm not really caring about HR uh, high availability. The metadata store might not be maybe in this on this registry. Uh, sorry, in this cluster might be another. So then, uh, you don't have uh, you you don't have to run in the same cluster where you are enforcing the policies. And I think that's it uh, from my side. Do you have any questions? Yes, Steve. Hey, so awesome presentation, awesome focus on area. I mean, the whole SBOM to be uh, a better data source to help evaluate as a piece of content, you know, match requirements is awesome. I think my questions are kind of on the on the where and the when um, parts of the flow, and uh, that. I'm curious what you think around, you know, like you mentioned, the admission controller to the cluster. You know, similar to scan results, like we, we typically try to do scans up front and the admission controller make sure that the scans that are, are current before blocking. So there's no performance. Like when you want to deploy a node, deploy a workload, you really don't want to wait for a long scan to happen and get the results. You kind of want that quick checksum that says, yep, this thing was scanned, it's within a policy and away it goes. So the first part, I guess, is have you thought about where or when and where in the workflow that the SPOM scan would get done? Yeah, so I mean, obviously, you can you can uh, set this this step uh, before, right? You can you, in the supply chain when you are building the image, you can probably define which which dependencies you don't really want to to get uh, uh, on production or get on the production registry. So you can uh, either consume uh, uh, the registries where where the most of the developers are pushing their their developing uh, versions or images, or either you can have a supply chain where you define uh, these steps to to, to be uh, checked. Um, there are options that where where the validation should happen. Obviously, if you do the validation beforehand, then you don't need to have an admission controller uh, on the clusters that you will be running that code. Uh, however, you will always have uh, third-party dependencies, and you really don't control all all the software that you are that you are installing right on your cluster. So you 
need some some kind of uh, of uh, additional police enforcement. But uh, yeah, I I, I think uh, the scanning is happening at an early stage, either by source scanning and container image scanning, and and the validations can be can be done in the in the steps of supply chains and being where we are uh, considering that, and, and for that we also kind of. Uh, adding uh, signing uh, policy enforcement uh, the same way that this bomb policy enforcement uh, can be done, right? Awesome. I, I guess the other one was the conversations around the registry APIs and so forth. And I know you were open some, some PRs around the uh, extensions APIs and search APIs. And, like, we're going through the same thing with Azure and you know, the SBOMs that we do for uh, Office and Windows products and so forth. So one of the one of the things that we've been thinking about is that you know the size of the S bombs are huge, and do we copy those to multiple different systems for different use cases? The thing that we've been you know considering is like managing the life cycle of all those S bombs along with the artifact that it's associated with. So in addition to the normal ingress and network controls and authentication controls that you want on the registry, you want on this additional metadata. But the piece that you're touching on, which I completely agree with, is the indexing. So I'm, I'm curious, is it important to have the data out of the registry, or it's important to have a way to index and run efficient queries on the data that happens to be stored in the registry, but the indexes in, that you would run for those queries could be APIs on the registry at API. So in other words, that's still that registry endpoint that you permitted access within the VNet. But the yes. backing store of that API is some kind of query engine, index engine, but it's indexed over the data that actually still is in the registry. Definitely. Yeah. So we have considered that. Obviously, the ideal scenario will be like we have a, a API extensions and we can create all these queries um, or index this data uh, within what the, pro, the registry is provide right like uh, the, the problem we are facing as well is that we are creating an, an additional system where it can be attacked so you are creating another jet another place where where hackers could could attack to you but uh, unfortunately there are no options today or api extensions will be something that we really uh, like to see happening because we will try to to use it uh, in a more formal way to to make queries uh, to the data that we are adding to to the registries, right? And and this is an example of S bomb, but I can also identify some other things that we are storing today on the registry where we really want to have additional additional flexibility to what the OCR is to provide today. Awesome. I'll free up for other folks, but we should definitely talk more about the extensions. Like there, there is no blocker that you can't write your own extension. Lots of people have extensions to the registry API today. We're working on formalizing a, a place to do it, but there's no there's no blocker for what you need to do today. So we'd love to follow up more. It's awesome. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Um, yeah, I, I, I had one, but I think that was mostly uh, what, what Steve had already um, mentioned there, which is, uh, you know, I guess more like um, around performance impacts and anything, mm -hmm. you know, because when you're, you know, querying a database versus just sort of pulling in an attestation or something like that, that says, hey, I, I previously I had done a scan and this is what I found and, and I'm going to say that that attestation, let's say, is valid for a week versus um, the database uh, versus versus going after the database. But I think there's there's good uh, comments on that already. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, again, you you really need to have a source of truth where you have to expose to customers certain information. Uh, that's what we are seeing, right? Like they really really want to have. Uh, search engines and then kind of uh, extract all this information daily basis, whatever it is on your clusters, staging development and production. So uh, you can have this is a fair solution as well, alternative. Uh, yeah, then you really need to have uh, all these index data and available at the second, right? So they can consume it, or at least is what our impression is. is, is me. Yeah. 
Thank you. Okay, so I pass the baton to you. <laughs> <laughs> sure, thanks. Uh, yeah, once again, I, I, thank you again. And uh, I just want to make sure any other questions, comments, uh, I, there's definitely um, things I would love to discuss, but I think most of those are probably you know in the weeds uh not necessarily you know uh, uh necessarily for 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 this meeting but um yeah i i, I think that's that's really good i know uh sort of steven mentioned would love to kind of get some better understanding of like what sorts of things do you think are valuable coming out of the the s bomb what sorts of things do you view as sort of like things that don't necessarily need to be you know like like from your perspective, you know, what sorts of things are like, hey, this probably makes sense for us to really think about at emission control time. This is probably something for us to think about at, let's say, build time and, and those sorts of things. Because I think one of the things that, that has also been brought up and is kind of a, of a key concern to this group is, hey, not just that like we're deploying something into production, but does it make sense that like when we sort of develop some of these, uh, you know, we're, let's say, generating an SBOM during a build, you know, during build time, do we want to go and say, actually, we're going to fail the build because we looked at your S bomb and you're using, you know, uh, a highly compromised, very old version of a thing, you know, uh, and and I think that's kind of, you know, a, 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 a key concern for us. Yeah, kind of tying along with that, I, I was kind of going with Steve's concern as well. There, that the S bombs to me. Feel like they should always be the static thing and you should always say here's the s-bomb don't even fail the build at that point you're saying here here's what i created and it might be a huge thing to look at and the scans would be an ongoing thing because they're not static they're going to change over time you're going to build it once and scan it a dozen times during the lifetime of this container image and hopefully those scans can push up their attestation up to the registry and say hey i've scanned this recently you know this will expire in one week and those can be small. And then your emission controller can just look at those little small things and say, hey, I, I see the scan, looked at the SBOM for me, came back and gave the thumbs up. And that way, you, it's a separation of those policies from moving it out of the emission controller to moving it to the scanning system. And the emission controller is just looking at that thumbs up, thumbs down from the scanner. I agree with that, with the scanning. It totally makes a lot of sense, but for instance, you have thousand containers on your on your production cluster, and you really want to know if all of them are using the log4j dependency 1.20, I don't remember <laughs> the version at the second, right? How you get that, right? Like then this kind of detail might tell you, yeah, there are no vulnerabilities during the last day or two, but then you what do you do? I, I, I'll trigger thousand scanning uh, to, to all the images that I have running in production, or I try to uh, follow a database where I might have this information uh, replicated there somehow, right? Um, uh, I agree, yeah. it's, it's different options, different solutions, yeah. Yeah, and when I say scanning, I'm thinking you're scanning the SBOM itself, and that SBOM may have been imported into a database somewhere, um, but uh, some way, somehow doing that kind of logic. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can comment on this a little bit. So I work, I work at Anchor and we have Sift and Gripe are the open source, but then we have an enterprise product. And the way that works is you, obviously you scan a container to build an SBOM or you can import an SBOM. And then basically you set a policy and anytime like a vulnerability feed changes, it functionally will say rescan. It's just running queries in a database. And then obviously, you know, you can have your, your vulnerability database could be updated a hundred times a day and it's going to verify that every time, plus whatever else you can add licensing checks. And I mean, there's a million things you can do, but I mean, with current, with modern database technology, it, it scales to the moon. It's, it's pretty simple. I and mean, we've got people doing 30,000 plus scans again a day with like no issue. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a good point there. Um, and I know that's actually one of the other things that that when we when we also kind of go back to the SBOM thing, I know it's something that uh, a few of us have brought up in a couple of the other sort of meetings in in the various um, supply chain groups. Is is also uh, sort of an understanding of 
how the S bombs are being built so that we also have a better understanding of like, what are we actually looking at? You know, um, and cause like, uh, I think as, as folks sort of mentioned, you know, um, uh, uh, Sift and Gripe are, are great as, you know, but they're obviously using a bit of a heuristic sort of model, trying to figure out what's sort of in there. There's some other models that are sort of taking from the builds directly. There's probably, you know, at some point, um, it probably makes sense to sort of combine the two to sort of, uh, you know, um, do that, some of that as well. And I think, um, you know, uh, my, my point just being that, yeah, there's still a lot of work that we kind of need to figure out, you know, especially from the client end. I think one of the things that we're trying to also figure out is like, you know, working at an enormous enterprise that uses multiple different tools for different languages. And we have lots of different, you know, we might be focused around particular operating systems, particular package managers, but we still have a lot of stuff all over the place. Um, it can often get complicated and, you know, we're, we're often not sure what we're actually looking at, you know, um, like, are we looking at an S bomb based on, you know, yes, this came from the compiler or the, comp or not just the compiler, but the build tool, let's say Maven and Maven is telling us, Hey, I pulled in these libraries because this is literally what was in your manifest file. And this is what I've recorded. And as long as I trust the build tool, yada, yada. And then here's some additional metadata from something like a SIFT saying, Hey, here's the packages that were on the operating system based on what we determined. But combining all those sorts of things together is, is I think going to be um, an, an interesting challenge because, you know, we, we might want to better understand like, oh, okay, this is something that is doing this sort of heuristic. So that we're going to provide this level of confidence. These are the additional things we might want to poke around with there um, or additional scans or whatever. Um, yeah, it's, 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 sorry, but my, my point, my main point is just like, yeah, it seems like a very interesting challenge. Totally. Yeah, uh, I, I do have a question actually about um, how you reconcile what happens if your admissions controller rejects an image as, you know, it's got the log4j vulnerability. Say it's, you know, just the log4j just came out and now, oh wait, I can't get my core login service to deploy now because my admissions controller is saying it's insecure. Now, none of my clients can log into the service. So yeah. I, it makes me question whether an admissions controller on production is really the right place in the workflow to, to really action that. Exactly. Yeah, that, that's a, a valid concern. And, and it, it can also happen for signage, signing the images, right? If you, you've, you are police enforcement detects a, a container image that's not signed uh, and it's not good, what happened, right? Um, from our side, uh, we have uh, think about that. We are not like going in one direction or another, but obviously that also happened when you have uh, Kubernetes running cluster in production and then you have an out memory error. Um, critical pods will never go away unless it is really going uh, something wrong, right? So the idea is probably to define this kind of, of critical of, of things that you are running that you don't really want to, to to start to evict uh, in the same, following the same logic as yes. well. So yeah. it's like that's, you, you would need like exceptions or something on the policy according to the criticality, maybe, you know, yeah. log a warning rather than uh, reject. Yeah, yeah, I would recommend, you know, sending an alert yep. and then you can yeah, action exactly. it from there. In yeah, broad. yeah. Yeah, evicting pods, <laughs> production clusters. Uh, yeah. You well, get, I'm not uh, even necessarily saying evict the pod. It's more, you know, uh, it's Kubernetes. Nodes them. go down, yeah. right? So yeah, the node goes yeah. down, and I've just lost half my login service, which is now teetering under load. And it's trying to create a new node. It's trying to create new login services, but something changed, yeah. you know, in that time frame. Definitely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. My, my, my two cents has always been, um, don't break production. So, right. Like if, if, if you, you know, even if there is a vulnerability, like there might be a, Hey, yeah, I am totally cool with you flooding the logs with, Hey, here's a bunch of vulnerable pods and, and, and whatnot, but, but don't take down what's already there. Um, and I think, you know, with a lot of these, uh, things like failing new deploys might be potentially useful depending on how you might want to do certain things um, where it's like, Hey, look, here's, here's something that is a new version of the software. We want to deploy it. Oh, wait, that's using a vulnerable version of log4j that we had just discovered. And obviously there could be trade-offs there as well, which is like, 
yeah, but, you know, we might still let it through because, you know, this still gets us, be you know, closer to fixing the problem because we need to get, you know, it's a, it's a stopgap or something like that. Um, but then in addition to that, actually, one of the questions, I, I know it's one of the things that as we kind of, um, the admission control stuff becomes more mature, one of the big ones is, is how do we deal with situations like, you know, let's say, you know, as Steve has sort of mentioned, you know, maybe one day we really want to make sure that everything is sort of in a source of truth, like the OCI registry itself. But if let's say what happens if, for example, we're trying to deploy, we're querying Graphius, Graphius is unavailable, right? How does that, like, what's the failure mode? You know, are we failing close? Are we failing open? Um, I know, depending on how you set up a lot of the stuff there, right, you need to it's already kind of right now a little complicated. Like you need to have your admission controller. If you want to fail closed, you need to have your admission controller actually exist outside of the cluster you're doing admission control for. Otherwise you can end up in a situation where if it fails closed, you can end up in a situation where you can't actually deploy anything to the cluster because of a misconfiguration of a policy. And now all of a sudden you, your, your cluster is just sort of um, uh, you know, it, it is uh, a lockdown. Uh, yeah. I, I think there are many examples of that with Gatekeeper already. Um, and, and one of the suggestions from Gatekeeper is to, to delete the mission controller definition from, from is this a, the, the, the rescue uh, mode, uh, they call it, uh, is basically to, to remove the, the configurations from Kubernetes, right? Um, but yeah, it's obviously a, a, a potential um, issue, yeah, you can counter. Yeah, I'll just kind of comment on my own comment that I threw in the chat. But if you're separating the admission control from the scanning process itself and you're relying on an expiration of like, you know, one week from the scan and you rescan something that fails to scan the next time that had previously been accepted, you can probably treat that as an outage and say, hey, here's something that we thought was good and is no longer good. This is a problem. And then you can go through your recovery process. Do we want to scan it, sign it anyway and say it's okay for now? Do you need to fix this in a hurry before it becomes an actual production outage? Um, but that's, if you separate that logic, you get a little bit more flexibility there. So it's kind of like basically, you know, we've got this time box window of, of one week or, or the time to the next scan. And you can say that this is an impending production outage. We know that in by, by the time that we try to deploy this next, there will, we won't be able to, so. It's a good way of putting it. Exactly. Yeah, I, I think it, it, it all depends on right, like different uh, folks' comfort with that, you know, and I should say different organizations' comfort with that sort of thing. I know at, you know, sometimes uh, at banks, you need to put light a fire under folks, otherwise they just don't get it done. And if you tell folks, hey, look, this is going to be a, a, a production outage if you do not address this, and we will hold you accountable to that production outage, all of a sudden, the thing that they said, no, we can't possibly upgrade it until that, you know, we can't possibly upgrade it in two weeks. It gets upgraded in two weeks. Uh, great conversation. Any other sort of um, final questions, thoughts, uh, anything else? Otherwise, we can talk about uh, some of the next a uh, couple of weeks. All right, cool. So once again, thanks Hector for the, the, the great demo. Um, I'm sure we'll kind of continue some of the chat in, in Slack and offline. Um, so just as a reminder, uh, once again, for anybody who joined late or whatever, uh, here is the doodle poll one last time. Um, put in your last, you know, if, if, if you know anybody who wants to contribute, who hasn't, and just because they can't make this meeting, we are going to probably be changing the meeting um, to another time uh, shortly. Um, just wanted to kind of get that out there. Uh, we also, once again, I know the Secure Software Factory reference architecture, which, you know, folks have been wondering, hey, is that thing going out? Uh, you know, because of, um, you know, post uh, KubeCon stuff, and then there was the holidays and everything else. Um, stuff sort of went on the back burner a little bit, but, uh, you know, our, we have a technical writer who has been giving a lot of great feedback, um, Celeste, but, uh, Celeste is actually going to be, I believe, uh, uh, announced that, um, they're going to be leaving the CNCF, uh, soon. 
um, I think at the end of this month. So <laughs> we're, we're, we're trying to get all that sort of stuff addressed sooner, you know, pretty soon. Um, we're also going to be uh, putting out uh, probably in the next, hopefully once some of these really, really big comments are addressed, we're going to be putting this out for um, community uh, review and community feedback uh, quickly. So once again, please, you know, uh, if, if, uh, especially for those who have already contributed stuff to the doc and, you know, uh, could sort of look over, see if there's any comments on anything that you had sort of contributed um, and kind of provide some additional feedback and, uh, and, and whatnot uh, would be, would be useful there. Um, let's see uh, what else. Um, so that's that. And so figure the next couple of weeks, um, this should hopefully go out. There will be, um, we'll, we'll get some additional feedback. Uh, definitely probably for the next uh, few, few weeks, um, anticipate is mostly going to be feedback on the document. But if folks have uh, interesting demos to give over the next uh, few weeks, I think we're interested in that. And if folks also have thoughts on hey, once this document goes out, what maybe are some next steps that folks would be interested in working on? Whether that is, I know a few folks had talked about stuff like um, uh, code that is related to some of this. Um, I know we have uh, at City, we have uh, some code that we've written up and based on the fact that it's not purely CNCF related, uh, it's probably gonna be, um, we're looking at donating that to the OpenSSF. Uh, but we're, we're looking at sort of working with folks in this group and in other groups to kind of, um, you know, continue to address some of these, these challenges. So if anybody has any thoughts or whatever, um, feel free to sort of add them to the agenda, uh, talk about them in Slack and, and whatnot. Any final questions, comments, thoughts? Anybody have anything that they think would be useful that they want to demo off next week? Otherwise, we can kind of just chat about it in Slack. All right, cool. Well, so uh, everybody have a, have a good week, and uh, we'll continue the conversation in Slack. Thank you, Michael. Yep, thanks for the demo Thank again. You. Thanks, right, Michael. Here. Thanks, Hector. Thanks.